Hello, beautiful seekers, and welcome to Moon Magic and to our Cancer New Moon for July 20th. This is our second new moon in Cancer this year. We had the first last month at the very beginning of Cancer season, and now we are having a second. And this happens for one sign every year. There's a double, a double moon, and this year it is Cancer with the new moon here. And we are closing out cancer season in style. We will be, this is, the sun and moon will be together here at 28 degrees of cancer. So we will be in the last couple of days of cancer season. Uh, and new moons are always a time of renewal, of checking in, of sitting in the darkness and allowing ourselves to open up and initiate in some new wisdom, right? And often we are told to, you know, sit at this time and set intentions. That's often what new moons are associated with. Intention setting, listening in, understanding intuitively what new beginnings are. And I've always loved the symbolism of, you know, when we sit in the dark, that's really the new beginning. Often we associate new beginnings with brilliance and light and shows and, and fanfare, but often our beginnings start in the quiet, in the dark, in the not knowing, right? They start in ways that we don't understand fully until we look back. So this new moon is very spiritual and there's a very specific lesson or thing to tap into this month um, and for this moon specifically to take with you and pay attention to. And that is because while the sun and moon are hanging out together at 20 degree, 28 degrees of Cancer, Saturn is hanging out at 28 degrees of Capricorn, a perfect opposition going on here during this new moon. Saturn is at home in Capricorn. The moon is at home in Cancer. These two are in their most relaxed, comfortable state. So we are really getting a face off between mother and father energy during this new moon and a balancing happening. You know, oppositions invite in balance. They invite us into understanding where we need to harmonize, where maybe we need to nurture ourselves more with that mother and cancer energy and maybe where we need to find the courage or the audacity to move on things with the father energy of Saturn in Capricorn. So balancing mothering and fathering energy, this is a really great time to incorporate anything you learned from eclipse season. We just had a couple of eclipses in these signs. Uh, anything you've learned over cancer season, anything you've learned during the Mercury retrograde we had earlier this month, this is a great time to incorporate any lessons around balancing and harmonizing these aspects of ourselves. But there's also something that came to me when I was feeling through this energy that I really want to share with you. Uh, something that I've been working on for years and it's coming up here specifically with this moon, which is this. So when you look at this opposition, initially you might feel like there's kind of a heaviness or a restriction around this new moon. Like you're feeling the, the pull of that Saturn influence, which is very much, you know, Saturn is father time, <laughs> discipline, restriction, uh, limitation, you know, when we, it's quality over quantity energy here. And it's really, you know, I'm not going to be doing a lot, but what I am going to be doing is going to be this quality thing. I think that's the gift that Saturn always gives us. But sometimes, you know, that can feel a little heavy. We've just returned to Saturn and Capricorn. So we're all kind of coming back to a certain level of discipline and intensity that we're used to. But here's the thing. Oftentimes when we think about discipline or showing up to the table, showing up and doing the thing or showing up and dealing with life, right? There is a certain amount of trauma we kind of want to put ourselves through with that modality, right? We want to feel like we need to feel heavy about it. We need to feel stern about it. We need to feel anxious about it. We need to feel stressed about it. We need to feel strained about it. And we have to put ourselves through that entire emotional process before we get to the part of the actual doing of the thing, the, uh, you know, sitting down and taking the time and, and taking care of something or sitting down and clearing out some space in your life, right? We feel that we have to go through a bit of a like trauma response around taking discipline, taking responsibility in our lives. 
And I think this moon is asking us to question that part of the process, the part of the process that demands we feel heavy, we feel bad, we feel shame, we feel guilt, we feel like we've disappointed our internal father, or maybe our real fathers, or maybe where we feel shame or guilt or anger around father energy, both on the collective and within ourselves. It's going to ask you to question when we really need to employ that emotive response before we get to taking action. So this is a really great moon to question that and to welcome in, you know, joyful discipline, right? The joyful discipline for me is, you know, taking that 30 minutes if you're trying to write a book or you're wanting to connect more with your body or you're wanting to have a serious conversation, giving yourself that time and saying, you know, this is something I really want to embody, right? That's joyful discipline. And it's not about stripping yourself of all joy in life. It's not about making yourself feel bad because you haven't done X, Y, and Z before now right? It's, it's a much more nurturing way of employing Saturn energy. And I do think with Saturn, we often replicate, especially in Capricorn, especially Saturn and Capricorn, we often replicate having to go through an entire emotional response around anxiety, shame, guilt, and fear before we do the thing, right? Before we feel empowered, before we feel we can self-father, we feel we have to go through this den of pain. Now, cancer season always teaches us that we can nurture ourselves into greatness as well, that we can feel deeply, that we can emote deeply. And here's the other side of it, right? We can, sh we can tap into emotions that embolden us and give us courage and give us that sense of total nurturing. And I think this moon invites us in to open our hearts, to welcome in divine grace and have us be a tool and a modality for moving through the world with that grace. So yes, balancing mother and father, this is a great self-parenting, internal systems type new moon for any of you who do that type of work. Really great time to take care of your inner child, prepare for Leo season, which is all about the inner child, all about the creative, um, and to give some grace to whatever it is you've learned during this cancer season. Uh, and there's one more really, ooh, I just got some full body shivers. <sighs> there's one more really great aspect to this moon. Um, there's a lot of simplicity here. We're not doing eclipse work here. We're, we don't have a lot of aspecting going on, and in fact, we're preparing for a month of a lot clearer energy coming up after this new moon. But there is one other aspect that I think is really beautiful and I love that it's hanging out here with this really intense opposition. And that is that the north node of the moon is at 28 degrees of Sagittarius. So that's a quincunx, this really interesting aspect. It's not an opposition, it's not a square. It's, it's another asking us to balance. So that kind of, these are five signs apart, right? So there's that kind of seesaw feeling, like how do we reconcile the brilliance of that north, or that south node, it's actually the south node. I'm, I'm making things up right and left here, aren't I? Um, the south node of the moon in Sagittarius and the moon here are in conversation. So the brilliant, curious, creative, philosophical south node in Sagittarius with this moon in Cancer, this new moon in Cancer, is also helping us to reprogram how we connect with discipline, how we connect our life philosophy around what we deserve, uh, how we want to make things happen. This is all going deep into how we engage with our, our internal ability to choose our thoughts and choose the, the, the deep pathways and alleyways in our mind that we want to embody and embrace. So this quincunx is also helping us reconcile our worldviews, our philosophies, anything that we, is no longer serving us as we reconnect with our mother and father energy. So I think there's a lot of symbolism and poetry in that conversation. I can't believe I was saying North Node just now because that's that would be a different conversation. <laughs> but uh, we are having a conversation with the nodes of the moon here as well. That's, that was my point. So this is a really powerful moon. Let's pull a card for this. I think the goal here is really though to nurture and soothe us into a sense of 
of that courage to show up, right? That courage to be here. And where do we get that courage? It's not from shame and guilt and fear, right? It's not from those modalities. Those modalities don't help us learn. That's the interesting thing about those modalities. What they do is they stop us, you know, and they can stop behavior. And sometimes we've used it for unacceptable behavior or behavior that has hurt us or hurt others, right? We can use shame and guilt and fear to do that, but it doesn't help us learn new skills. So those tools have very deep limitation. Um, and so when we're being asked here to sit with this, it's like we can engage with what we want to learn or what we want to lean into or what we want to understand without using those tools. And we actually learn more. Okay. The 10 of pentacles wanted to come out and I just want to pull one card, one message. A Ten of Pentacles is, it's interesting, I actually think about this very much as father energy, because when you look, you have your, you have your grandfather here, you have your father here, you have this concept of building something. This is very Saturn energy in many ways, because Ten of Pentacles always grants us our wishes via slow, steady work, slow, steady showing up, brick by brick building, the time it takes to really have something flourish, right? Not being in a rush not feeling like we have to be at point Z already to be here in the process. Ten of Pentacles is also very nurturing energy, right? Uh, very slow, loving energy that wants us to build things with intention and not in that big rushed sense of, I have to get this done today or it won't matter anymore, right? So I think the, the message that comes through here for me with this moon as well is that this is a time to just, you know, you may feel like you're chomping up the bit that you want to, you feel restrained. You feel like you have to be patient. Um, you feel like you're having to like hold yourself back, but you want to just be roaring forward into the future. You know, you're ready. You're ready to go. You're ready to already be building this, this legacy. You're ready to already be having the experience. You're ready to be expanding and opening a lot faster than maybe this moon has you feeling. But that's all an illusion because the Ten of Pentacles here is saying that even if you, from whatever perspective is coming up for you during this moon, whatever emotions are coming up for you this moon, even if you feel like you aren't building, creating, learning, integrating, moving forward, maybe you feel like you're standing still, you're not actually standing still, you are moving. And you're moving within the context of this much larger lens, which Ten of Pentacles always asks us to step into. You know, Ten of Pentacles is so much bigger than just our little selves in this very moment. It's all the things we're connected to. It's the way we connect to time. It's the way we connect to the people around us and to our community. It's the way we surrender into the us and the we, right? It's the way we surrender into something bigger that's not just about our individual identity journey moving forward. Um, and so, and just letting that grace guide how we move forward. So there's some deep wisdom going on here. Um, and I think, you know, with that impatient feeling that may come about just for the couple of days around this new moon, not really for a long period of time, but just especially around the couple of days of this new moon, this is a time to just integrate, to balance out that father mother energy, to question the shame, guilt, fear modalities of how we get things done in the world. And I think it does require us standing a little bit still, building, crafting one brick of knowledge to take with us that can be the cornerstone of building something much greater and more powerful. But if we don't have a cornerstone that's built on something of love and nurturing and openness and curiosity and courageousness and using those forms of discipline, right? Those disciplinary practices. It takes practice to be courage courageous. It takes practice to be curious. It takes practice to be relaxed. These are disciplinary things, right? Those disciplines need to be our cornerstone. And those are the disciplines that open up the world. Those are the disciplines that allow us to build the rest of the temple of our lives. So really strong message coming through there with that. And it's a reminder that whenever we think it's necessary to go through pain, shame, anxiety, fear, guilt before we can problem solve, we don't have to anymore. Those, those modalities don't serve a purpose other than to keep us stuck. 
So big questioning going on there right now. And I would say actually this last five or so months that we have Saturn and Capricorn this year, that's going to be a theme that comes up again and again, and you get to practice into the courage, curiosity, and openness uh, more and more and more. And by the time we get to Saturn moving into Aquarius later this year, there will be a mastery there that you can take forward with you into the big openness of Saturn and Aquarius. Okay, but we're talking about the new moon here, and this is a moon energy discussion. I will be checking back in with my patrons over on Patreon for those of you who want a little more support with moons, with transits, with everything going on in the world, and to connect with me a lot more deeply. It's a beautiful little community. Um, we do our activations very close to the, to the moons so that I get whatever wisdom wants to come through at that day. We often do an exercise and go a little bit deeper into these energies. So if you'd love to join me, I, ha I will leave that link below as well as my Instagram and my email and my website. All the great places you can connect with me and of course pink loon's gorgeous jewelry i wear it every day you can find her etsy shop below as well i'm sending you so much love and i really appreciate you being here it it means the world to me that you all join me on this journey every month and i am sending you so many blessings and well wishes for this new moon